bonus pickup before we get in today's video, which will be Spooky Empire. We're actually leaving tomorrow. That's why I'm packing. <laughs> anyway, uh, first being Dale Earnhardt, uh, three. Very cool. Barry Pepper as Dale Earnhardt. Uh, I actually watched his last race when he sadly passed with a bunch of my cousins. They were all big NASCAR fans. So it'd be pretty intriguing to see. Uh, it's a Buena Vista home entertainment release in ESPN. There it goes. Now it's focusing. So I'm excited about that. Pretty cool. Then upgrading green card, which I have on VHS. And then this was really cool. A really cool upgrade. It's brand new factory sealed. Uh, I got a l little more excited because I thought they had the third one there. But... It was uh, White Wolves 2, and I thought it said 3. <laughs> anyway, this is still pretty cool. Eventually, I will get White Wolves 3. It's very confusing because it started out as a cry in the wild. Then the second one went to White Wolves. Then this is White Wolves, a cry in the wild. See, White Wolves, a cry in the wild. It's confusing. Then it's White Wolves 2. I forget what that one's called. Then White Wolves 3. So, very confusing. But anyway, upgrading the first White Wolves, which is a cry in the wild. <laughs> Brand new factory sealed. Someday I will... I already had upgraded White Wolves 2. So now I got upgrade White Wolves 3. Then I will have the whole Cry in the Wild franchise on DVD. So that is cool. All right, we're going to roll the intro and get into today's video. Josh and Caleb. Parking was a nightmare. We're literally five miles away. <laughs> Where's Cove? There he is. Day with Cove is here. We are eventually going to get to that big motel over there. Uh, we're at Spooky Empire. Day one. It's only like, what, five hours today? Four hours? Something like that. It's a nightmare. Tomorrow with Millie Bobby Brown is going to be insane. We got to get here super early, but... We're going to go inside. Alright, we are at Double Tree. See the big Frankenstein here. Go to show the sun. Alright, here's the sun. Spooky Empire. This will be our first time ever at Spooky Empire. So let's, let's go inside. Alright, all the autographs are along this hallway. The Terrifier actors. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, oh, that's the, there's the vendors down that hallway. We have not the living dead for the actors. It's cramped in here. <laughs> oh. Midsummer. I actually like that movie. <laughs> we will do Heather tomorrow. We need the two. Okay, 
Joe just got his son. Me and the Night of the Living Dead cast. Terrifier cast and trauma over here. Some very, very cool posters. One weekend, I believe, and then by that Sunday, reports started coming out on Twitter that people were passing out and bombing. <laughs> <laughs> and I swear to you, I keep saying this, people, they still don't believe me, I swear to you, we had nothing to do with that. That's all genuine, organic, word of mouth, and actual accounts. So, yeah. Um, and, uh, and that sort of caused it to go viral. Uh, so then, actually, our distributor sort of had to scramble because they're like, oh, we have something here. We kind of got to keep this going. So it took like a big dip from that Monday to Friday, and then they finally got it back into theaters on less screens, but it made more money than it made the previous week. And I went into this not knowing at all, and this is like well, my fifth convention, I think, and I love it. I love coming to these. I love meeting all you guys, and none of this would have happened without you, so... Thanks to you guys, yeah. Amos, I remember you said. Um, yeah, it's kind of wild because it's what, 2023? Is that what, what year we're in? Um, <laughs> <laughs> we did this in 2015? Or 2015? 2015, we were filming. 
So kind of, it's, it's, it's wild. It's been a wild ride to imagine that all these years later and then for it to blow up like it did. I don't think any of us anticipated. David, did you anticipate this? No. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but, but it's, it's been amazing and, it's, and I, I as well love to be here being all the fans because it is a fan. It's a fan film and we wouldn't be here. So. You know, kind of mimic his facial mo movements and everything, and Damien helped a lot. So, yeah, I just kind of went all into it, not really thinking about anything, and did that. <laughs> yeah. You were brilliant. Uh, yeah. All of the cast is brilliant, and I have to say, your version of Patty Cake is so iconic. <laughs> Thank you guys for that forever. I, I have to tag on to this because, you know, I. I, I used to be a camp counselor at the uh, Skits and Drama Club, and I was, you know, she was like, what, nine at the time? Yeah, yeah. yeah and I, that's the, the age I was in charge of, and I was so used, when I was doing the Skits and Drama Club in my camp, was like having to direct constantly, like, hey, this is how you do this, 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 and I was so prepared to be able to do that with her, but she, right there, just went total right into all, everything, just playing along with me, and I was like, wow, I don't, I, She's amazing. She's naturally talented, and I was. This is a very rare thing to see with a child at, at that age at the time. And I was like, I was like, she's she's fantastic. She's, we had fun. There's there's so many outtakes, especially from that possum scene. That's not in the movie. We we had the possum show that day. Yeah, we, I did a puppet show. We treated yeah fetch. Um, Play dead with you know, because it's a possum. Play dead, it's funny. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, we, we played around so much. It's it's a shame that you know so much of that's not seen. I hope he releases like an uh, extended version of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all of like the patty cake and everything like that. A lot of that was improv. Yeah. We kind of just went for it, and the possum, all of that was improv. How he loves to cause mayhem mischief and all that so th there's definitely a lot of joker in in my, my version of art so I'm like hey, I'm, I'm just hoping like a certain Mr. Gunn takes notice of that. <laughs> <laughs> James put me in coach. <laughs> Let me show the other clouds how it's really done. <laughs> Although the uh, original actor is my buddy Mike Gianelli, and uh, he was not an actor. He was when I was getting into makeup effects, he would just hang out with me, and I would just test effects on him. And I'm like, oh, I want to like have this blood pump on the back of your head. I need to like pull somebody's brains out. I'd be like, let's go up the side of my house. I set up the camera, and I just like start spraying blood everywhere. And he was my guinea pig. If I needed to make a prosthetic, I had the uh, mold of his face, and I would make zombie prosthetics on him and things. And then when I made my first short film, I said, I have this clown character, and I need a prosthetic. I already have your face mold. Because I, going back to the Joker, like I knew I, when I first sculpted art, especially when I re-sculpted him for the Terrifier short film, the comic book Joker was a big inspiration, just the way his features are, the very pointed chin, pointed nose. Um, but I said, you know, I need, I need an actor. You don't have to speak. I just need you to kind of sit there in this prosthetic and smile and make these weird faces and things. I'm like, trust me, you can do it. He was like, all right. And it wound up really taking off, and everybody was like, ooh, you should make more shorts with this character. And then I was like, you know, I told him we need to make another one. He's like, all right, I'll do it. And then we made Terrifier the short film. And then the fan base grew even more. So when it got to Terrifier, I told him, dude, we're going into making a feature. Finally, we can make Terrifier. And he said, you know, I really can't go through those hours in the makeup chair. It's not fun. And it's not fun. It's a really, it's a really hard, it's a real process to sit through. Right? What a shame. What a shame. <laughs> and I said, you know, and it was tough. Like, I, I begged him to do it, but he, you know, he just had to go, you know, go his own way. All right, Spooky Empire Day One just got done with the Terrifier 2 panel. That's it for Day One. Uh, if you liked the video of Patty and Heather signing, that was Caleb. <laughs> so much fun. It's it's not as structured as MegaCon. It's more like not i don't want to say anything More goes but they're laid back they don't care if you video or you can video take you pictures can you have know. a two-minute conversation with yeah. someone so awesome great day one uh we will be back here tomorrow for day two 
Millie Bobby Brown will be here. You saw on the, the billboard. I, I can't fathom how that's going to work unless she is in the back part She's of the building. She has her own room. She has to have her own room. That's only because the room we were in was very cramped. So I don't see her getting into that building. So we'll, we'll see. <laughs> but And will you film the panels tomorrow? Yeah, I'll okay. film all the pa This is just going to be one video. So. Yeah. I, I always say I'm going to split them up, and I never do, so I'm going to start out saying one bit. Alright, we are in our room. We are staying at Endless Summer Portside. Uh, amazing view out here. <laughs> but uh, I forgot. Well, I was going to do this anyway, but I got to show everything I grabbed from the con today, some merch and the autograph, so I'll flip the camera around and show you. So, got a t-shirt, I like to get a t-shirt from every convention I've been to, although Megacon doesn't do Megacon anymore, it's the, the, there's a group of cons that are all under one name, so I haven't got a Megacon shirt, maybe next year they'll change it back. And a poster, uh, save that, it has this little tiki inspired style on this side and then uh, this side is everybody who is here this year. Godzilla, Patty Mullins, Heather, uh, I, f I forget her last name, we met her today, but a cool poster, that was only a dollar, so some cool merch then uh matt patty mullins so nice i got this poster in my blu-ray signed uh she was super nice uh took a bunch of pictures with me and <laughs> get up asked us about being twins and everything and she was right next to heather so uh, her mom was talking to us and she got a picture. Heather signed the back here. She was the first one in the back. I went to do the back like two and three and the front is the first movie. So I'll get Kevin Smith to sign because we'll meet him in Knoxville uh, later. And then uh, Flat Top, uh, I forget his name though. Uh, I'll put it here if I can find it, but super nice guy, I asked him all about the makeup on Dick Tracy, he said took, when they started it took four hours, then they got down to two, but it always took an hour to take off, and then I found some DVDs, I, I was hoping to find movies here, uh, this is a documentary, Night of the Nights of the Living Dead, about George Romero and the, the other guys that did zombie-inspired things. So that's cool. That was, that's on my wish list. So was this. The Crazies out of the remake did not have the original Blue Underground. These were only $10, so that is awesome. All right, so... That is everything we picked up today. We didn't even go in the vendor's room. This was uh, right beside the trauma group. So that is cool. Nice little haul for today. So now we're going to cut to day two. Caleb was saying that it's dock side, not port side. You idiot. Wherever I said, I don't know. <laughs> You well, for me, I was on out, and I, I totally forget. Also, in those Not the Living Dead pictures, the mm -hmm. first guy, uh, Russ, Russ, right? Johnny is this character. Yeah, so. in both of our pic Well, you won't see Cap's picture, but... You will, because see you will watch video. my video. But the glasses I'm wearing were worn by George A. Romero when he filmed... Not of the Living Dead, and his wife gave them to Russ. So that's that's and he brought up we're 
We're just shooting the breeze with everybody. It was so nice today, by the way. And he's like, hey, you want to wear George's sunglasses that he wore? I'm like, I'm like yeah. Is, <laughs> there's, there's no option that says no in that scenario. <laughs> so, and he's like, and we got to get a picture. So that, that was cool. All right, now I think we are going to pick up I mean, everything. So awesome. Everybody. So, pick up day two. <laughs> All right, we are starting day two in style. We get to go in. <laughs> so now we are going inside because we already got a wristband yesterday. This is the line just to get tickets. So we are going to go in starting day two. Uh, we saw Adam. Uh, that was cool. Maybe we'll see him inside. Uh, but Caleb has a few autographs to do. So let's go in. It goes from there all the way down there. Well, let me get closer. So it starts right here, goes all the way down to the end of the building. Good thing we got here yesterday. We got a band, so we got an early. Uh, Who do you meet? Lou Temple. From Walking Dead. Uh, Poltergeist. Heather, Heather again. Poltergeist kid. Snowman from Six, Scream Six, and Denny. Denny from he, the Prince. He was I, so awesome. I froze. He's like, "Do you want a phrase?" Or I said, "Signature character name." And I was like, "That." You're he's just... like, "He's like, you want, dude? You're sniffing my boxer. <laughs> well, you're sniffing my boxers, dude." I'm like, "Yeah." I, so awesome. it is. As we were looking at the line, we saw Micah, so said hey to him. So Adam, Micah. Jay was here yesterday. We so. didn't see Jay, but That's he was okay. here yesterday. They were probably here early, but uh, I think I'm going to meet Lloyd Kaufman later. I already bought something. They said come back. He's probably going to be late. So we'll come back for that. But when's our first panel? It's at 1, oh. so we'll okay. see. I'm gonna have to do the panel while you're doing yeah, this. Yeah, probably. Going in the vendor room. So, Matt Lloyd Kaufman, now we are doing the panel for Land of Food, Blood and Honey, which will be interesting. It's a little crowd at now.
All right, so we're going to go back for a little bit of history on you guys. Tell us how you got involved in acting. You just start down the line and let everybody know a little bit about your background. Yeah, okay, so um, it was about four years ago. Uh, I've been cross training martial arts for a long time, and I was like, you know what, I'd really like to get into uh, action scene, fighting, things like that, film and TV. Uh, so I just started networking, really, branching out, um, trying to meet people in that industry, um, getting involved in it, meeting new people, they were sort of teaching me the trade, how to get into it, and it all just sort of spiraled from there, really. I just kind of landed into it. Uh, then I got a casting call with Jagged Edge Productions for Area 51 incident. Um, I was just a support actor with that, but it was my first sort of <laughs> time on set, screen time, which I loved. And then I had to bump for it, so I was like, yeah, this is cool, this is what I want to do. Uh, and then um, the casting could come out for Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Uh, Scott literally, Scott Jeffrey, the producer, he literally messaged me and said, would you like the role of Pooh? We think your size and build would fit it. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's so great. Yeah. I don't know if that's a compliment. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I looked at my belly, I thought, all right, right, okay. So I, um, I said, okay, send me the script, uh, had a read through that, and yeah, loved it. I thought this was going to be a lot of fun, so I was like, sign me up, let's do it. Um, so I've been acting since I was a child, like for as long as I can remember. I do like plays and musicals at school. So I've been doing it full time for about. Um, I think maybe four or five years now, I've done about a hundred productions, maybe like 25 horror feature films. I'm obsessed with horror. Uh, I think most people are here, so that makes me pretty happy. I think you're in the right way. Yeah. Yeah. Winnie Pooh, Blood and Honey, I'd worked with the production company previously, and I saw the casting call for this online, and I read it, and I laughed, presumed it was a joke, and just scrolled past it. And then I was like, wait. <laughs> and I read it again, and I was like, oh, this is serious, okay. Read the synopsis and I was like, this is actually a pretty cool idea. Like, it's wild, but I'm, I'm here for it. And then I applied and they gave me the role based on my performance in the last film, and now we're here. <laughs> and now it's history. Yes. Yeah. I grew up uh, watching, I had like a wall of VHS, and every day I was, one day I was a cowboy, the next day I was a detective, and I just, I like to pretend to be someone I'm not. And, and I, I think when I had done Street Con in Desire, school I think that's when I really focused on acting and um, I done one film of Jagged Edge before called Alien Invasion and then they just got in contact with me about uh, playing Christopher Robin. I wasn't a big Winnie the Pooh fan growing up um, but then when I heard the concepts I was I was interested straight away. <laughs> Except for trauma, and I'll tell you right now, 
if it wasn't for them, I would have no career whatsoever. No career whatsoever, because they write the kind of stuff that I love to do. So, uh, yeah, just the best. The best. <laughs> That's right. Agreed. That means uh, he's talking about James Gunn and Eli Roth and uh, Sergeant Kaboom Man NYPD and uh, and Tony the Nuclear Rodent and uh, Dalton Man too. Thank you, Todd. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, wait, uh, during the Tromeo and Juliet that James Gunn wrote, uh, I I would have done the Tempest, but I wanted to wait till I was older and I could really feel what uh, Prospero went through. He's old, he's losing power, I'm sinking deeper and deeper into the reefs of the underground, but like Prospero, I make uh, magic. The Tempest has a monster, it's got a lover, uh, a loving couple, a beautiful uh, romantic couple, it's got the fairy in it, uh, it's uh, got trauma written all over it. Just when nobody comes to the table, don't be sad. Aww. Aww. That was a, see, that was my hustling. <laughs> That's when you guys all come to the table. Set him up. Um, um, no, I mean, he, I know him well, and, and we were good buddies on House of Wax. Like, we hung out all the time. Yes, I, you know, I just, I just want to be himself and enjoy it. And, uh, you know, he's such a nice, personable guy. It's, it's not hard. You know, it's been amazing. It's not hard to coach. You did say you're going to meet some incredible people, and I absolutely have met some incredible people. It's been, it's some. been wonderful. Some. Some. I, I, I a see a couple of you right there still questionable. Hold on a second. You stand up. I'm just uh, but no, it's been, it's been very, the people are amazing. You guys are so beautiful, and, I, and, and I'm having a great time, so thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Before we go later, we're going to have to take selfies with all you guys. All right? Not one by one, just all of you. We kind of do that. Okay? No, 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 guys until the end of this whole You know, it's certainly the biggest budget horror movie I've ever worked on, right? A lot of times horror movies are on the lower budget size, and that's what makes them great. But to be on a horror movie with that kind of money behind it, they built an entire Louisiana town in the middle of the jungle in Australia. And, uh, and all of our sets on the sound stages were completely dressed and coated in wax. Everything was ready to go at all times. So we were there for four or five months. And you know, there's a lot of downtime, like certainly for me, I'm not in the movie that much, so there's a lot of time to chill. And you know, we just spent all that time together, we traveled together, and, uh, and then I never talked to him again until now. <laughs> so, uh, so. Not true, but definitely not enough. But that town that they built is actually still there in Australia. Yeah, it's, it's still there. You can go visit it. Yeah, um, but it was spooky it's walking around that town, like, because it was fully dressed, and there were wax mannequins in all the storefronts and the church and everything. So you just go walk around there at night when they weren't shooting there, and walk in and sit down in the chapel, and there's like, you know, wax Jared Padalecki next to you, and then, you know, somebody in the coffin, and you know, it was like. Mommy, hello? <laughs> yeah, super scary. Are you like fake head? Yeah, you know? your fake head just laying around. Just laying around. <laughs> um, and then we burnt the stage down too. I just wanted to get into that. We actually, you know, Lars, you've watched, you've seen the film and our town burns down. But so, yeah, we, we take were. Take it over, Bill. Uh, aside from. <laughs> Thank you, I will. Uh, no, no, he just dominates the conversation all the way. Like, I don't even know. I'm making Are you finished? Because <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that. Uh, Yes, we also had three giant sound stages. Warner Brothers has sound stages in Surfer's Paradise in Australia. And so all the sound stages had full sets and they were all coated in wax and like 24 hours a day they had these big cauldrons of paraffin wax being melted and they were just painting the walls with wax. And one night 
on one of the stages that had all the camera equipment in it and all these dress sets, a flame leaped from under the cauldron and leaped to the wall. And you can imagine that the entire building, about this size but higher, was a big giant candle. And the entire thing burned to the ground. All that was left were three steel I-beams that were melted down to about this high. That's it. So imagine all this dressed with camera equipment and all that's left are three ideas like this. And uh, so we ended up having like an extra three weeks off while they had to go and build all these sets. And so it was kind of like um, Apocalypse Now uh, or what's the uh, Heart of Darkness if you've ever seen the documentary about how they all go crazy making <laughs> Apocalypse Now. Uh, we were just like left to go mad in the jungle uh, for three weeks. I love the fact that he wasn't even there. I actually, Chad Michael Murray, and I, he's responsible for burning the place. It was during the, fun, the fight, the stunt scene, and that's what literally happened. The candle hits the side of the, the floor, the curtains, and it went up in a matter of seconds. But uh, yeah, I can't believe we really burned the entire stage down, really. Yeah. How, how can we say insurance scam? Anyway? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we just wanted the three weeks off. Everybody went home except yeah. for us. We stayed in Australia. We loved it so much. Yeah, they, did, they gave us the option. They were like, you can stay or you can go home. And we stayed. just stayed. We were like, let's stay. some Blu-rays. Uh, there's a Blu-ray guy here, La Vinegar Syndrome, Scream Factory, anything you could think of he had. Uh, he gave me a deal on these, uh, 20 each, which is pretty, pretty good. These are both Vinegar Syndrome. He had 35 on there, but he went down. Uh, Bloody New Year, which has I've been wanting to see and buy, so that's been on my wish list a very long time. So is this one. Don't go into the in the woods alone. Uh, so yeah, that has been <laughs> probably longer than that's been on my wish list. Have been wanting to see these for a long time. Then we met Lloyd Kaufman. I bought this box set and they said come back and he'll sign it for free so I did and it's the only way you can get the animated series and then it comes with all all the movies as well see there uh, I did have this uh, but was missing the the little hour sleeve and the series I got it really cheap at a convention somewhere so I, I, I sold it to somebody they just wanted the movies anyway uh, he signed it so that is very cool awesome to have Tuxie <laughs> a complete the complete tux Toxic Avenger in the 13 episodes of the animated series that is cool and then they were handed these out Lloyd Kaufman and Babette they were both there signing so that is cool a free picture and a free he signed two things <laughs> free autograph with a purchase so that is cool and two vinegar syndrome I've been wanting to get they've been on my wish list so an awesome haul today. I didn't do this yesterday, but I was going to show some of Caleb's stuff. Uh, this plaque. Have you done a video explaining this plaque or well, showing a video? Well, playlist I talk about celebs I've met, but I haven't... I need to do that, I guess. Yeah, go through each, go through one, each one and one show a picture. 
and the screen poster, everybody has loved this thing. <laughs> Uh, you got on eBay, right? I want to say it was eBay, yeah. I believe it was. And then the Meet the Parents. Oh, I didn't show this in my haul. Uh, Adam Adventures with Adam the Woo, a big sticker. He gave that to us earlier today. And then uh, he's, then he's <laughs> uh, were you just sniffing my boxers, dude? <laughs> So cool. So there's Caves. Oh, and Poltergeist. So that is, that is awesome. All right, now we're going to do the outro. So uh, that's good. We had a few panels there in a row. Lots of fun. Matt Lloyd Kaufman. I already mentioned that. Uh, go links down below for this guy's channel. And that's going to do it. our first time at Spooky Empire, not very well organized, <laughs> but still a lot of fun. Uh, not sure if we'll do it again, but we w it was a bucket list it for us, cool to a con. So, yeah, that's going to do it for this video. I'm Josh. More videos coming as always. Until then, if I don't see you out thrifting or at Walt Disney World, I will see you at the movies. Bye.